Assalamu alaikum dear students. Um, this is our, might be the last lecture of the third semester physiology, which is actually uh, the memory physiology, how memory is stored, what are the different types of memory, and when there is loss of memory, so what does that condition is called. So we will discuss these topics in today's lecture. So what is memory? Uh, if we go for the definition of memory. So memory is retention, storage, and recalling of the learned information. Some information which is obvious, uh, already stored in our brain, and then we recall it. So that is called as memory. But if we are unable to recall our stored previously past experiences and information, then that will be called as the loss of memory. Memories, they are caused by changes in the capability of synaptic transmission. Synaptic transmission means the transmission of impulse from one membrane, which is equally the presynaptic membrane, to the post-synaptic membrane. So from one neuron to the next uh, neuron, which is actually the interneuron uh, synapse, as a result of previous neural activity. These changes in turn causes new pathways for the transmission of signal uh, through neural circuit of the brain. The new pathways are called the memory traces, which uh, then they are stored in some specific areas. And upon uh, our and our will, then we are recording all those memories. So if we talk about uh, the classification of memory, uh, memory on the basis of that stored information, there are two types of memory. One is known as the declarative memory. The other is known as the non-declarative memory. And the non-declarative memory is also known as the skill memory. Now, what is the declarative memory? This declarative memory that is also known as the explicit memory, uh, which means the memory of various details of fact that can be consciously recorded, like memory of surroundings, memory of causes of experiences, memory of meaning of experience, memory of relationships, and memory of one's deduction that were left in mind with up closer to one wedding. It means uh, these all are the memory of some experiences and some happenings in the past, which we can recall then in the future and in the present. Uh, so these uh, such memory will be called as the declarative memory and also known as the explicit memory. The Skill memory, which is also known as the reflexive memory, also known as the implicit memory. Uh, all these three names, they can be used for the non-declarative memory. This uh, memory, that is uh, why it is known as the skill memory, because uh, this memory is formed because of the repetitive activity of some uh, activity. And when uh, there is exhibition of that activity again and again and again and again, so that becomes memorized in the brain, which we call as the skill memory, implicit or reflexive memory, or the non-declarative -declar memory. So through repetition and practice uh, does not involve consciousness and awareness. Uh, when the person has become too much uh, practiced and practiced to that activity, so then there is no need of awareness and consciousness and doing that activity. Skill memory is associated with the motor activities of person's body, such as all the skills, developed for hitting the tennis ball. So the person who is uh, very skillful in tennis, he's elite player. So whenever he just uh, is going to play that, uh, that uh, hit the ball, there is no need of just memorizing and recalling because uh, now he is uh, does not need any consciousness. He will just hit the ball automatically. So that is just because, uh, because of that, Repetition and practice and practice again and again, this has become a memory for that. So explicit memory can be converted into implicit memory uh, after the constant repetition. Explicit memory, which we uh, call as the declarative memory, uh, when there is repetition and practice again and again, so that explicit is then converted into implicit memory. Classification of the memory on the basis of duration, uh, short-term memory, intermediate long-term memory, and the long-term memory. Now, what is the short-term memory? 
A short term memory, they last for seconds or at the most minutes unless they are converted into long term memories. So any event uh, are happening which is just uh, made of, may consist of some seconds or minutes. Uh, so that storage at that memory, they will be called as the short term memory. Short term memory is a continual neural activity resulting from the nerve signal that travel around in a temporary memory trace through a circuit of uh, reverberating neurons. Intermediate long-term memory, uh, this type of memory which lasts for days to weeks, but then fade away. Uh, so they are stored temporarily and there is no permanent uh, storage of these memory. Result from the temporary chemical or physical changes in either pre and post synaptic terminals. So just because of their um, temporary chemical or physical changes, they are then fed away up to weeks. These changes persist for a few minutes up to several weeks. Uh, that means they can be from minutes to days and several weeks mean up to three, four weeks. Entertainment in long-term memory is caused by the habituation and uh, sensitization. Now, what we mean by the habituation and sensitization? We will discuss these two uh, terms in the upcoming slides. So first of all, we will talk about what is habituation. Habituation result from the progressive closure of the calcium channel of the presynaptic terminals. There are calcium channel in the presynaptic terminals, which open when there is transmission of impulse from one surface from the pre to the postsynaptic membrane uh, or surface. So then uh, this habituation occurred when there is a uh, progressive closure and blockage of these calcium channel. So when these calcium channel, they are closed, it means that less calcium ion will diffuse in, uh, into the presynaptic terminal. As a result, less neurotransmitter is released because uh, higher the calcium ion released, um, higher will be the neurotransmitter released. So if uh, the calcium channel they are open, so more and more neurotransmitter will be released from that presynaptic uh, membrane. Habituation is actually negative memory, mean the brain ignores and significant sensory information. Now what we mean by the uh, facilitation or the sensitization? Uh, that is a very complex process and it consists of the four or five steps. So we will just discuss each step. So the first step is that uh, stimulation of the facilitator terminal at the same time the sensory terminal is stimulated cause serotonin to release at facilitator synapse. So the first step is the release of serotonin. So we can again summarize this first step that the serotonin will release at the a facilitator synapse. Then the second step will be the released neurotransmitter, which is the serotonin. That serotonin will act on the receptors in the sensory terminal membrane and then will, uh, in response, activate the enzyme adenyl cyclase inside the membrane, cause formation of the cyclic AMP or CMP. So if we uh, summarize these steps, initially there, will, there was a release of serotonin which was acting on the receptor and then there was activity which will cause the activation of the enzyme adrenal cyclase and this enzyme when activated it will uh, cause the formation of the CMP. When this CMP is formed it is activated uh, and this CMP then activates a protein known as kinase and that kinase uh, then cause the phosphorylation of protein uh, that is a part of the K channel and when this phosphorylation of protein happen, so this phosphorylation will block the K channel. K channel are those channels through which the potassium ion passes. So if there is a, a phosphorylation of protein, uh, that phosphorylation of protein will cause the blocking of the uh, potassium channel. So when potassium channel are blocked, so less uh, potassium they will conductance cause a prolonged action potential. So uh, we can say that not the less potassium, there will be lack of potassium because there will be complete blockage of the 
potassium channel. So when there is complete blockage of the potassium channel, there will be lacking of potassium and that lack of potassium conductance cause prolonged action potential because potassium or plex is essential for the rapid recovery from the action potential. But because of the absence of potassium, uh, there will be prolonged action potential uh, conductance. Prolonged action potential causes prolong, uh, um, prolonged activation of the calcium channel, which greatly increase transmitter release, thereby facilitating synthetic transmission. So if you summarize all these steps, initially that was the retinin release, uh, which was acting on the receptor in the sensory terminal membrane, uh, which then activate the enzyme adenyl cyclase, uh, help in the formation of the CMP. CMP then activate a protein kinase, the protein kinase causes the phosphorylation of the protein, and that phosphorylation of protein causes the blockage of the potassium channel, which will lead to the lack of potassium conductance, and that lack of potassium conductance will cause the prolonged action potential, and the reason behind that is that the potassium multiplex that is essential for the rapid recovery from action potential, but there will be no such uh, potassium, so they will be, the action potential will be prolonged. And when these action potential they are prolonged, uh, they will cause the prolonged activation of the calcium channel. And these prolonged activation of calcium channel, which greatly increase the transmitter release, and the, thereby facilitating the synaptic transmission. If we talk about the long term memory, the long term memory lasts for months, years, or even lifetime. Uh, these are some specific events in our life. And whenever, uh, after years and years, when we under according to our will, when we are going to, going to recall them, we just recall them and then never fade away. Even some memories of the childhood, they are still uh, memorizable and they're still uh, able to, we are able to recall them in our adult life. That memory is known as the long-term memory. That result from the actual structure changes instead of chemical changes or the physical change at synapses. So following are the structural changes that occur. Increase in number of the vesicle release, that vesicle which containing the neurotransmitter. So when there is increase in number of vesicle release, it means more and more uh, transmitter will be released. Increase in number of the presynaptic terminal. Uh, because if we have to release more and more vesicle, we need to more and more transmitter. Obviously, we need more presynaptic terminal in order to release more and more vesicle or more transmitter. So increase in number of the presynaptic terminals and then changes in structure of the dendritic spines, which will lead to the, the preservation of memory, uh, which we call as the long-term memory. Amnesia, uh, the loss of memory or the inability to memorize, that is known as the amnesia. If someone has um, stored memory, but he or she is unable to uh, mem uh, recall that stored information, that will be called as the amnesia. So there are two types of amnesia, anterograde amnesia and the retrograde amnesia. Now, what is the anterograde amnesia? Uh, in integrated amnesia, the person is unable to store new memory for more than a few minutes, while the previous or the past memories, they are still intact and he can uh, recall those. So that will be called as the integrated amnesia. The retrograde amnesia means uh, the person uh, will be unable to recall memories from the past uh, and he, he, he or she will be able to uh, store new memory in the upcoming days but he or she will just lose all the memory in the past. That is actually known as the retrograde amnesia. Some causes of this amnesia that is damage to the brain structure like the limbic system. Um, as we have discussed in the previous lectures, limbic system is mostly involved in the emotions and as well as to the memory. That's why if there is something wrong with the limbic system, hippocampus specifically, and tenemus, so that may lead to the amnesia. And stroke when the brain has been damaged just because of that uh, lack of blood supply or when they have because of that hemorrhage. Uh, so the, that may lead to the loss of memory. Brain inflammation uh, that will again lead to the damage of that store areas where the memory has been stored. Lack of adequate oxygen to brain, brain tumor, certain medications such as the sleep drugs. So all these will lead uh, to the 
uh, amnesia or mean the loss of memory. So that was all about the memory. We discussed what is memory, what are the types of memory uh, on the basis of two different classification. And then we discussed the amnesia. Uh, so that was all about the memory. If you have any question, then you can ask uh, through the WhatsApp or you can ask through the email. Thank you so much to all of you.